It's almost the finish line. Just a little more. Come on, Bolt. We can make it. Yes, yes, we've done it again. So, as you can see, the winner was me, Matilda, along with my horse, the Heroic Bolt. This is our third win in a row already. Woohoo! It may only be a small hometown race with a modest prize, but it's still gonna go a long way in supporting my grandparents' farm. Now, it's time for this guy to rest. Good boy, Bolt. You did amazing out there. A 16-hand stallion, healthy, glossy coat, and a well-mannered temperament. Jeez, the horse dealers even follow me home now? I took a handful of hay, spun around, and hurled it at him. Go away! I don't want your stinking money. Bolt is not for sale. Right at that moment, my grandpa appeared. Matilda, that is no way to speak to our guest of honor. I apologize for my granddaughter's behavior. She's a firecracker at times. Teenagers, you know? Anyway, it's dinner time. Please join us for a home-cooked meal right this way. Huh? Guest of honor? Who could he be? Oh my god. It turns out the man was none other than Mr. Allen, the chairman of All Stellar Inc. Corp., the annual sponsor of my family's farm. I turned beet red and apologized profusely for being so rude to him. No problem, kiddo. I like your spirit. I thought it'd be a good idea to check out the farm I'm sponsoring, and I stumbled upon the racing tournament. Oh boy, you sure can race, can't you, girl? Not many can handle a wet track at that speed. We have our reservations about her, skipping school and competing in such dangerous races. But Matilda's insistent that she was a part of this family, so it's her responsibility to help us, her only remaining relatives. Mr. Allen gave me this thoughtful look, then said, How about this? The annual sponsorship for your grandparents' farm stays the same, and on top of that, you can move in with me and have a proper education. Did I hear him right? I gasped. B but who will take care of my grandparents? Sweetie, we still have our health. We can run this place just fine. That's right, Maddie. Take your chance. Opportunities like this don't come twice. But what about Bolt? I can't go without him. Bring him along. I have a small horse farm where he can stay. You can help around the stables, and we can call it payment for your school fees, alright? Well, I guess that's settled then. Yay! One week later, Mr. Allen sent his driver to pick me up, and the new chapter of my life started from here. Wait, oh my god, this can't be it! Mr. Allen said it was a small horse farm, but this place, it's enormous! As soon as I stepped out of the car, a girl my age rushed over and hugged me. Matilda, you're finally here! I'm your new sister, Judy. I greeted her back with the widest smile. She seemed so sweet. She led me over to the front porch where Mr. Allen and a woman were waiting for me. It must be my new mom, but why was she giving me such a strange look? Before I could even introduce myself, she turned and walked into the house. Hmm, maybe she wasn't feeling very well? That evening, I dined on a lavish meal. We chatted lots and the Allens seemed fascinated by my childhood life at the farm. Especially Judy with her 10,000 questions. <laughs> Sis, so, um, is it true that you have never seen your parents? Yeah. My father passed away in an accident before I was born, and my mom also left me when I was an infant. On hearing that, Judy gently comforted me while Mr. Allen smiled and said, Now, besides your grandparents, you also have us, your second family. You got a sister, a new dad here, and also your caring mom. Right, darling? Mrs. Allen flinched and dropped her fork. I immediately leaned over to ask, Mom, are you okay? But to my surprise, she just yelled at me. Don't call me that! Feeling flustered, I stared down at my plate. Had I done something wrong? Over the following days, I tried my best to get closer to mom, but I was always met with coldness in return. One time, seeing Mrs. Allen was resting outside, I brought her an iced coffee. But as soon as she saw me coming over, she placed her hat over her face pretending to be asleep. On another occasion, I complimented her dress, but she just stutted at me, then walked away. I really wanted her to like me, but it was useless. She clearly detested me. <sighs> but at least I still have Judy and Dad by my side. Judy tried reassuring me that Mom was a good person and that she just needed a little more time to get to know me better. As for Dad, not only did he send me to a top school, but he also encouraged me to follow my passion. All the afternoons when I got to watch horse racing and bet on the winning horse with Dad were so much fun. And as I watched the horses gallop past, a thought crossed my mind. 
What if Bolt and I were the one on that track, winning the race and bringing back the huge prize money for my grandparents? I couldn't stop thinking about this. So one time, on the way back home from a race, I asked my dad if I could compete, and he didn't even hesitate to reply. Why not? You do have a talent. How about give it a go? Oh god, this was so exciting! My foster dad was the best, and I couldn't wait to give this my all and make him proud. After that, he immediately got me a personal coach and a dedicated team of trainers and groomers for Bolt. I'd never felt so happy, and Bolt had never looked so good. Everything was great, except that Mrs. Ellen still seemed to have an issue with me. Every time I packed for practice, she always frowned and muttered stuff under her breath. Maybe she's irritated about the fact that an adopted child like me was receiving much more than I deserved, or something. But anyway, whether she liked it or not, with my talent, I'll quickly rise to be a brilliant rookie. One morning after practice, Judy came up to me and said, Matilda, can you teach me how to ride a horse? Uh, it might be a little scary for a first-timer. Are you sure you want to try? Yes. Please, if I know how to ride, I can spend more time with dad just like you do. I looked at her angelic, hopeful face. How could I say no? So I helped her onto Bolt and taught her how to hold the reins and do a few commands. It went smoothly at first, but suddenly Mrs. Ellen came out of nowhere and shouted, What are you doing? Judy, come down right now. Startled, Judy misjudged her movements and tumbled off Bolt. As we both rushed over to check on her, Mrs. Ellen pushed me aside, which caused me to fall onto my butt. Do you know how important legs are to a ballet dancer? Are you intent on ruining her future? Before I could reply, she shouted, What an incompetent kid! Get out of my sight! Ugh, it was just a few scratches and bruises. Why was she so serious about it? And incompetent? Huh, fine. I'd show her what an incompetent kid can do. From then on, I got my head in the game and continuously won several small and medium prizes. I sent most of my winnings to help out my grandparents and kept the rest to treat Judy and myself to something nice. One day after dinner, Dad called me into his office and told me that the two biggest races of the year, the Grand Shields and the Royal Silver Ford, were coming up in two weeks and he'd already signed me and Bolt up for them. But the two races were only one week apart. That would be too much for Bolt, cause the latest race seemed to wear him out. I mentioned this to Dad, but he was adamant that Bolt would be able to manage it. I didn't want to let Dad down, but I didn't want to hurt Bolt either. I needed time to think about it. As I left the room, I gave a petrified jump. There, in front of me, was a stone-faced Mrs. Ellen. She grabbed my arm and yanked me into another room. You can't compete in the races. They are different from your usual amateur events. You're not good enough, and you'll only embarrass our family. Were you eavesdropping on my conversation with Dad? Listen, you're not my mother, so you can't tell me what to do. I will surely join it. Then I stormed out of there. Early in the morning of the first race, I was going to the stables to check on Bolt when it caught one, two of Mrs. Allen's servants sneaking out of there. Hmm, what were they doing here? I went to investigate and, huh? This is not Bolt. What has Mrs. Allen done to my horse? Right at that moment, Mr. Allen walked in with the vet. I told him what I'd just seen and he muttered out, That woman dares to get in my way, huh? I'll make sure she'll pay for it this time. Then he turned to me and said, Leave it to me. I'll find Bolt. Go get some rest and prepare yourself for the race. I'd never seen him this stern before, so I just nodded in concern. Despite all the drama, I still managed to bring home the Grand Shields Championship title. It's amazing, right? However, I couldn't fully enjoy the victory as one thing was still lingering on my mind. Mrs. Allen has been absent for the last four days. Could it be that dad has done something to her? Hey, Judy, did Mrs. Allen say she was going somewhere? Dad told me that mom's been so stressed lately, so he arranged for her to go to Aunt Anna's villa to rest. Oh, it seemed like what dad said at that time was just an expression of anger. <sighs> at least I had one less thing to worry about. You see, my main concern at the moment is Bolt, as his health has clearly deteriorated since the previous race. The vet says he's doing fine, but through Bolt's heavy breathing, I know something isn't right. 
A week passed by and the day of the second tournament finally arrived. While the vet was checking on Bolt before the race, Dad suddenly pulled me outside. We must win today's match. I expect a lot from you. I had a bad feeling about this somehow, but I still nodded and assured him that I would do my best. The race was about to begin. Everything's in check. I'm ready for it. But wait, why does Judy look so flustered? Maddie, mom was not on a trip. The storage room. Dad locked her there because she found out what he was up to. He's doping Bolt. What is she talking about? Could it be that the vet who came in earlier was drugging Bolt then? But no way. If there's anyone wanting to harm me and Bolt, it's Mrs. Allen, not Dad. Listen, Mom only swapped Bolt the other time to protect you. Before I could shape what happened, I saw a burly man covering Judy's mouth and pulling her away. Then a voice whispered in my ear. Only one game left. Just keep your mouth shut and do it properly. If you lose, I can make things very uncomfortable for you and your grandparents. Got it? Now get on the horse. A chill ran down my spine. I felt like I was gonna vomit. How could the caring, kind man I called dad turn out to be such a fraud? The signal of the match rang out. Ugh, what should I do? I couldn't let that wicked man get what he wanted. So I closed my eyes and stayed put. What do you think you're playing at? Run! Run now! Mr. Allen went crazy and rushed over to me. But right at that moment, the organizer appeared and asked me to take Bolt for a health check. They led Bolt away and brought me and Mr. Allen to the office, where I was shocked to see a frantic-faced Mrs. Allen cuddling Judy. It turns out that Judy had freed her mom from the room Mr. Allen had locked her in. Then she'd come straight here and handed the organizers incriminating paperwork of her husband's corrupt doings. Mr. Allen glared at me and shouted, I had to raise you without any benefits just because of her. Now it's your turn to pay me back. Then he immediately charged at me. But Mrs. Allen quickly covered for me and pushed him away. And one of the race organizers restrained him. Don't you dare harm my daughter. Huh? Daughter? Mrs. Allen looked at me with tear-soaked eyes. Sweetie, please give me a chance to explain. I fidgeted the coffee cup in my hand and stared at the ground while Mrs. Allen told me her side of the story. Turns out she really is my biological mom. Could you believe that? After my dad passed away, in her vulnerable state, she fell for Mr. Allen's forced charm and fake words. But he soon showed his real face and heartlessly separated me and my mom after they married. That's why she could only secretly send money to our farm under Mr. Allen's name. Mom also recognized me from the beginning, but she didn't say anything as she knew that Mr. Allen adopted me just to get Bolt, a horse that could help him win some shady bettings. If I knew the truth and rebelled against him, he would harm me. I'm so sorry for all these years, especially these past few months. It has been extremely hard for me, having to treat my dear daughter so badly. But that was the only way to push you away from him, from this rotten house. I didn't want you to be in danger, just like how your real dad was when he worked for him. Please forgive me, Matilda. Tears kept rolling down my cheeks. Turned out, I always had a mother protecting me. Mom pulled me in for a tight hug. Mom! I hugged my mother tightly. I really love and miss you. Please forgive me. I looked up to her and smiled. Of course, yes. I'm more than happy to have you back in my life, Mom. And the best sister I could ever wish for, too.